what did you get on the math test? An A minus? A minus? Why not A? Oh my god! I'm getting flashbacks to my childhood, Jesus Christ! Hey internet, it's Jessica and welcome back to Butterfly Soup! And we're gonna be playing with a new girl today! And it's Noelle! I'm really excited to see a different perspective, um, and the, the backstory of everybody. So this is third grade! Oh no. Problem. What is this? She's so cute though, look at her! I can't read the test paper! Problem one. Oh my god, yo, I am bad at math. I've said this before, I struggled with- that was the one thing I always struggled in school was with math. I had trouble understanding it, so... Don't know what's happening here! <laughs> I'm gonna say infinity! <laughs> Problem two. I don't know anything! I don't understand any of this! I'm going to fail! All my hard work up until now has been for nothing! Wake up. What? Wake up. Dia looks very concerned. I had a nightmare. Ugh, that was silly. It wasn't even real. Sorry, feel better. She presents Noelle with a poorly wrapped, lumpy gift almost as big as she is. Happy birthday. Oh, <laughs> despite Dia's best efforts, several spots and gifts aren't properly covered with the wrapping paper. Noelle can see clearly what's inside. I appreciate your kindness. May I open it here? N Dia nods eagerly. Noelle unwraps the present and, present to be, and pretends to be shocked by its content. It's a giant bright green snake plush. His name is Snakey. <laughs> you know what's really funny? I used to have a plush snake too. It was pink though. And I named it Snakey. <laughs> That's really funny. Look at how he's striped. Noelle looks. Indeed, he's striped. He's the youngest. He has two older brothers and a sister. You bought this for me? I won him from the hammer game at the fair. Hit the hammer really hard. I chose him because he reminds me of you. He he reminds her of me? How? I don't even like snakes, and stuffed animals are useless waste of space. Yet, against all logic, a lump forms in Noelle's throat, impossible to swallow. Noelle quickly stamps down all stupid emotions and focuses on organi organizing her thoughts. Thank you. He is green, soft, and at least five feet long. I'll place him in my bedroom and preserve him in the mint condition for as long as possible. She looks happy. A warm, fuzzy feeling swells in Noelle's chest. You're my favorite person. I think I may have developed some kind of attachment to you, too. We should go on vacation together someday when we grow up. We Would it be, would it be fun? That would be fun. I would accompany you with you only mild complaining. Where? Maybe England? Can go to Diagon at... Noel catches Dia's face drop as she suddenly goes through five stages of grief, remembering most of the locations in Harry Potter aren't real. <laughs> we can at least see Platform 93 quarters. They put a plaque there at King's Cross. Okay. What else do you want to see in England? Oh, you can eat buffet. They have those here too. It's so simple to make you happy. If everyone thought like you, there would be no wars. Dia doesn't appear to know how to respond to this, so she just looks away and smiles shyly. If we run out of things to do in England, we can always watch TV in our hotel room. You complain too much when things aren't scientifically correct. Like when the radioactive things cause superpowers? You get so hung up on it, it's so distracting. Distracting how? Distracting like... Noelle watches a movie in class last week. <laughs> oh my god. Shut up, shut up, shut up! This is not scientific! He can't do that! That's not how nuclear physics work! No, shut up! <laughs> We can watch an educational nature documentary then, like Planet Earth. I don't like the part where the baby elephant follows its mom tracking the wrong way. We can skip the part where the baby elephant follows its mom tracks the wrong way. Suddenly, Dia starts climbing off the playground structure. Just remembered. Actually, Dia has been preparing to say this for the past 15 minutes. When want you to meet someone. I made a new friend yesterday. Really? Who? Min. Min? Is that a boy or girl? Not sure. <laughs> How can you not be sure? Did, didn't you meet? It was hard to tell. Oh, oh, there's a thing. Uh, someone commented in my last video for Butterfly Soup that Min is actually non-binary or um, non-gender conforming. So that's pretty cool that they included that. You'll see what I mean. I will? When you become friends. Min is really nice. Gave me a seaweed sheet. I never seen you this excited over someone before. 
They must be really something. Dia looks like she agrees. Oh, here we go. <laughs> this must be him. Her. Instead of introducing them, Dia just happily stand Dia is just happily standing there in silence. The other girl circles on Noelle, sizing her up. <laughs> the music. Her face darkens when she sees the snake plushie Dia gave her. So, you're Dia's best friend. You you giraffe? What? I'll fight you. Excuse me? There can only be one of us. So we have to duel. I'll beat you in hand to hand combat. What? No! <laughs> Starting in three, two, one. I already said no! <laughs> what was that all about? What an idiot! What is Dia seeing someone that dumb? I don't understand. I'm home. What did you get on the math test? An A minus? A minus? Why not A? Oh my god! I'm getting flashbacks to my childhood, Jesus Christ! <laughs> Noelle's mom is cutting a column out of the Chinese newspaper. Look at this article. This boy was accepted into every school single Ivy League college. He lives in Pleasanton. If he can do it, why can't you? I'm putting this on your wall to inspire you. She gets up and tapes it to Noelle's bedroom next to the poem that her dad printed out. There is no success without hardship. Can I go to the park with Dia this Saturday? What for? We're taking a walk around the lake. There's also a, a petco nearby. She wants to look at the fish and hamsters. Will Dia still be your friend if you say no? Yes, but I want to. Then there's no point. Now, that you've already established your friendship, you should be expending the minimum amount of energy to maintain it. Otherwise, you'll just be wasting your limited time. Fun is an illusion. Don't be controlled by your emotions. But I'm free this Saturday! Chinese school's on break! You can use it to study for your test at school. I already studied for them. All of them? I finished reading all my textbooks already twice. Did you do all the practice problems? I did all the practice problems. Haha, <laughs> take that. There's nothing that you can possibly be left for me to do. I'll buy the next year's textbook so you can get started on those then. Oh, poor girl. Oh, there's the giant snake! <laughs> Upset, Noel curls into the bed angrily, hugging the giant snake plushie. Read next year's textbook. This sucks. The fox and the grapes. The hungry fox saw a fine bunch of grapes hanging from the vine. He did his best to reach up and jump as high as he could into the air. But it was all in vain, for they were just out of reach. So he gave up trying and walked away with the air of dignity and unconcerned remarking. I thought those grapes were ripe, and I see now they are quite sour. Reading a comprehension questions. Why doesn't the fox eat the grapes? They were sour. He couldn't reach them. He wasn't hungry. He couldn't reach them. Through the window, Noel can hear someone swifting a bad, uh, whifting a badminton racket outside. Sorry! It's okay. Oh, the, that's uh, Min's brother. It sounds like they were playing badminton in the driveway without a net. They're probably the dumb kids in class. What does it was all in vain mean? It was useless. It was very close. It was a uh, great success. I think it's useless, right? In vain? No, wait. Yeah, in vain, yeah. No! Oh my god, did you see that? They're both laughing. Stupid hooligans wasting their time, having fun. Ha! I'm above such petty unnecessities. They'll regret it when they're working at McDonald's someday. That's the one thing I think that a lot of, like, Asian Asian parents use on their ch children. I'm not saying all of them, um, but some Asian parents say to their kids, like, if you don't study, you're going to end up working at McDonald's or you're going to work at this terrible job and whatever. And sometimes that's not the case. Like, sometimes it's, like, beyond your control. Like, um, for me, when I graduated school and whatever, there were no jobs available for me, so I had no choice and I had to work, like, a part-time job, uh, a job that I didn't want to do, and it was considered, like, you know, food services. So, I, I can't do anything about that, but does that make me, uh, unsmart? Does that make me dumb or stupid? No, it's just that the opportunity wasn't there. And I don't like the fact that it's still pushed onto kids today, like, oh, if you don't study, you're gonna end up working at McDonald's. That's not really the case. Also, there's no shame in working in, like, a job like that. Yes, it sucks, and you have to work terrible hours, you get terrible pay, and you have to deal with stupid people all the time, but, like, there's no shame in doing that. I don't like that there's, like, this mentality around a, a lot of children where they have to be like, oh, if you work there, it's you're a terrible person, you're dumb, or 
you can't get any better jobs or something like that. You're like, you don't have an education. That's what basically what it's saying. And that's not true at all. I hate sports anyway. I'm the real winner here. What's the message of the story? An appearance is deceptive. Look up before you leap. It's easy. It's easy to despise what you cannot have. I think the last one, right? Ninth grade. All right, back to the baseball. Noel, you're up to bat. Noel grudgingly steps up to the plate. I hate sports. Why am I here? Karsha is pitching. She raises her eyebrow at Noel as she winds up. Wake up. What? Wake up, Frenchman. You're in a coma. I am not. You are trying to confuse me and failing. Karsha pitches the ball. Swing at the bat. Through sheer luck, Noel manages to hit the ball. It pops straight up. Noel starts to run for first base with the agile of an old man with two broken legs. <laughs> I got it. Krista catches it with her mitt. The runner is already on first base. Already gives Noel a strange look when she runs up to it. Noelle, you're out. Stop running, it's embarrassing. What? Why? She caught it, genius. But, so? Why can't I run? How come there's a runner on first isn't- How come the runner on first isn't out? The rules of this game are really incomprehensible. It's okay, nice try. I don't need praise for failing, I'm not stupid. Noelle grabs the mitt and joins Dia on the other side of the field. We're taking turns batting, everyone who isn't batting or running and is defending on the field. Feels so odd being like this. I keep half expecting someone to holler at me to get off. Suddenly, Dia serves back to avoid B facing in her face. Did that B just sting you? Come back here, you bitch B coward! I'm gonna fuck you up! <laughs> Min moves indignantly between Dia and the B. She's trying to protect Dia from the B. Min throws a punch at the offending B. After silently watching a few fruitless swings, Dia takes off her hat and strikes the B in midair with the bill of her cap. No! Don't kill the bee! You shouldn't hit, hit bees, okay? They're like, endangered. If a bee comes up to you, just, you know, it's not trying to attack you, it's like looking at you. Like, they're kind of curious to like what you're doing. And it, people seem to forget, if a bee has a stinger, if it uses it, it will die. And they know that. They only do that if they're being attacked. So don't attack them. Okay, we need bees, I'm just telling you. Min beams at her with a pure adoration in her eyes. When did you move back? About two weeks ago. Wow, if we had any classes together, we would have crossed paths sooner. We would have crossed paths way sooner. Does Junso go here now too? No, he's at a different school. He goes to Niles. That's an easier, that's an easier like, Asian school. Well, why would your parents put you in different schools? They didn't. I originally went there too, but I got expelled. Expelled? How was Florida? You're not gonna ask about how the expel part? Horrible. They didn't even have a boba place there. I had to drink milkshakes. What the? That's crazy. Yeah, that is crazy. Like, where I live, too. There's a lot of Asians, like, here as well, like, where I live. So there's, like, a lot of boba and, like, bubble tea uh, shops here. So it would be weird to me, too, if I wasn't around that as well. <laughs> and everyone was white. <laughs> Are white people that bad? They do shit like they pull their eye uh, lids into slits and go ching chong ting tong. Oh, that's racist. And go back to China. I'm not even Chinese. I had to get so good at beating up people. What the heck? That sounds so like a cartoon. I thought racism was over. Me too. But they showed us that cartoons every year in class, where they time travel to when there's segregation. What happened? Beats me. The next batter strikes out. Liz, who is acting as catcher, returns the ball to Akarsha. Akarsha fumbles and drops it on the mount. Everyone watches disapprovingly as she scrambles to pick it back up. That was an illusion. A trick of the light. No, we can clearly saw you mess up. It's Dia's turn now at the bat. Dia hits the pitch with a downright scary amount of force. The ball shoots over everyone's head and lands on the tree in the distance, causing several starter crows to flap out. Yeah! Whose side are you on? We're supposed to be on defense! Okay, but you have to admit that was sick. Nice one, Dia. <laughs> Yay! It's Min turn it's Min's turn now at the plate. She immediately grabs the heaviest bat that they have. Minso, are you sure you can use that? We have other bats that are closer to your... This one's fine. She hasn't even tried the other ones. <laughs> but in general, people your size should be using the 31 inch... No! I'm not so weakling. Garsha bases back and forth as Min squares up in the batter box. Are you trying to psych me out? I bet you can't eat five crayons. Oh yeah? I bet I can. No eating crayons while this club is in session, please. Actually, Noelle, how about you try pitching now? It's been a while since you switched. Me? Noelle switches places with the Karsha on the mount. 
Bring it, you weak bitch. <laughs> Why are you insu- What are you insulting me for? We're on the same side now. No, we're not. The heck are you talking about? Don't baseball pitchers pitch to their own team? No. Everyone is shooting a well and appalled look. No, you pitch against the enemy team. It's the pitcher's goal to not let the batter get on the base. Oh, I see. So that's why the pitch is such a high velocity. So it's harder for the batter to hit a touchdown. Noel, have you ever watched a baseball game before? Can you even name a single baseball team? The San Jose Sharks, the San Francisco 49ers, Oakland A's. I don't know any teams either. Well, like a few, but like, you know what I mean? I'm not familiar with sports either. So I feel Noel on the spiritual level. Like, I don't know what's happening. <laughs> The sharks. Chris, it looks like she's about to cry. Well, that's a hockey team. Is it? Well, how was I supposed to know? They're pretty much the same. Min scores out of the batter box. Throw the ball. Noelle throws the ball at, with all her might. It plops back down on the grass, not even halfway to Min. The hell is that? That throw was soft. Nobody ordered ice cream, Noelle. Get it together. They're, they're kind of like hard on her. She doesn't like, you know, know how to play baseball, so it's not her fault. All right, I get it. I guess we'll count that as a ball. What? You didn't throw it through the strike zone. If you miss, it's a ball. If you throw four balls before the batter strikes out, the batter goes to first base for free. Where is the strike zone exactly? Oh, I like how it's kind of teaching you. This is nice. It starts at the midpoint between the top of the batter's shoulder and the top of their pants. The bottom line of the hollow beneath is the kneecap. What happens if you're wearing a skirt? Does it the default to the nearest pair of pants you own? You can never be wearing- you have to be wearing the proper uniform pants to play official games. There are rules about that. If we want to throw a game, but in a subtle way, all we have to do is pull our own pants up real high. Like we have our- up to our armpits. No, that's not subtle at all! Assuming that we play a regular way, don't short people just have naturally smaller batting zones? Since their bodies are smaller? Yeah, it takes more precision to strike them out. By then, the measurements are based on the batter's stance, not while they're standing up straight. Knowing that, can't we just reduce the batting zone volume to zero by squatting down? That way, any pitch they throw becomes a ball. I don't know if there's a rule against that, but if you do anything too weird, it'll be considered poor sportsmanship. It feels like other people aren't playing fair. It won't be fun anymore. The umpire will probably stop you too. Whenever something is not explicitly outlined in the rules, it's his call. Okay, are we done explaining now? Can we play baseball? Uh, sure. I think we covered all the bases. Get it? <laughs> Ugh! Laugh politely, don't laugh. I feel like Noelle wouldn't laugh. Noelle doesn't laugh. That was horrible! Krista looks disappointed by Noelle's cold reception to her joke. My joke was a swing and a miss. I better pitch the ball before she says more! <laughs> Noelle hurls the ball up with all her might. It plops down on the grass in the exact same spot as last time. Dia raises her hand and looks at Krista expectantly like she's waiting to be called on. Yes, you can just talk. You don't have to do that. Noelle doesn't have enough upper body strength to throw it like that far. That's no- that's a problem. No matter what position she plays, she's gonna have to throw it far at some point. Well, good thing I'm not joining this stupid club then. Probably s problem solved. Alright, whatever. I'll pitch for now. Noel hands the ball over to Krista and joins Akasha and Dia back on the field. Noel jacks up to them. Akasha plucks the dandelion from the grass and presents it to her. If you were a flower, you'd be a damn dandelion. This is literally a weed. Akasha tries to blow the dandelion season into Noel's eyes. Stop that! <laughs> Min smacks Krista's pitch into the ground and takes off running. Dia turns after it with the look of a dog chasing a squirrel. She scoops it up and throws it to Akasha, who manages first base now. I got it! I got it! Akarsha tries to catch it, but ends up knocking the ball away with the tip of her glove. Karsha, you need to work on your catches. Huh? Why? You dropped the ball. What? That wasn't me. That was totally you! Everyone saw! Incredible! That must have been my lookalike from another dimension. You briefly come to parallel universe when Akarsha didn't catch the ball. But now that you cross back over to reality where I did catch it, that includes the memory discrepancy. The only logical explanation. Are you messed up and you just don't want to admit it? Min manages to round the bases and score thanks to Akarsha's mistake. Akarsha, you're up to bat. I'm ready. Akarsha twirls the bat behind her back, squats down for no reason, and hops several times like a frog before springing back up into a dramatic pose. Is she going to do that every single time she goes up to bat? 
Knowing her? Yes. My signature. You don't need a signature. <laughs> Watch out. Huh? Akasha batted a bat straight to Noel. Noel flays her arms and panics and attempts to catch the ball. She missed it. Krista does nothing, and she is sulking because Noel didn't laugh at her joke. Ow! Oops. That was ghost. It wasn't a ghost! It's Mint's turn to now pitch. Krista hands the ball over to her and heads over to the plate back. Whenever you're ready. The feelers are all backing up. Chris, uh, Chris is even taller than Dia, so she looks like she could hit it pre pretty far. Min clutches the ball like a claw-like grip. She brings her arms back and forward, hard over to the top, and lets go. The ball approaches the plane and does a little hop, like a hiccup. Krista looks weirded out. She doesn't swing. Also, I just realized Min's shirt says, What the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> the fluidity is just enough to throw Liz off. The ball glances off to the side of her glove and bounces off her kneecap. What the? It's kind of creepy, isn't it, seeing the ball coming at you without spinning? Yeah, it was kind of like floating to me. Er, I couldn't tell the difference. It looked like normal to me. Liz returns, returns the ball to Min. Min clutches it at the same messed up grip, rears up, and lets another pitch go. Krista misses it by a foot. It's a pitch you couldn't hit with a tennis racket. Liz has to twist into a weird angle to stop the ball in the dirt. Knuckleball, huh? What's that? It's a rare pitch throw, nearly with no spin, so its path is unpredictable. Oh, I get it. You're making this up to so excuse why you missed. I'm not making this up! It operates on the same principle and flows serve in volleyball. Or knuckleball if you're in soccer, you if you know that. Uh, no, I don't know either of those. Okay, so when you pitch a ball normally, it spins like crazy, some around 10 times the way on the plate. Spin is what gives the ball stability as it moves. If you can learn to throw a ball with minimal spin, its instability will give an unpredictable trajectory. It starts behaving like a chaotic system, like the weather. And that's great, because a lot of sports mastery is just recognizing situations. Everyone says to keep your eye on the ball, but it's actually impossible to do that due to the limitation of human reaction. What good hitters actually do is anticipate the ball's flight path based on the, cue based on the cues they recognize, from being similar situations before the past. In other words, they don't see the ball, they just guess its trajectory. Ah, but they can't do it against a knuckleball. That's right, a knuckleball's trajectory is dramatically different each time it's pitched. So no matter how good you are, there's no way to reliably hit it. Thrown correctly, thrown correctly, it moves so radically that it's impossible to hit except during the sheer luck. I still can't tell if you're making this up or an excuse why you suck. No, it's real. But you couldn't catch it, so it's also a convenient excuse for you. If it is real, then why doesn't everyone use it? It sounds practically a game-breaking. Well, for one, knuckleball is one of the hardest pitches to throw in baseball, if not the hardest. Remember in the beginning of the game when Min said to Dia that they should be the best pitcher and the best batter so that they could play together? And I think Min just did that. Put a little too much spin on the ball or throw it a little too fast, and you're basically serving up a meaty practice pitch that'll get you hit out of the park. And even at its best, a knuckler is a double-edged sword. Batters can't hit it, but also means the pitcher can't control it, and catchers can't catch it. When thrown right, even Min has no idea where it's going. They're saying throwing a knuckleball for a strike is like throwing a butterfly into a mailbox across the street. Even in the big leagues, catchers hate it. And if I let it get past me, it could lead to a batter or a runner. I'm base advancing. With a knuckleballer pitching, the catchers have to focus hard on stopping it that the runners on base will have an easier time stealing. It's a big pain. So basically, it's hard to throw right, it's hard to control even when you do throw it right, and it's punishing you if you miss? Pretty much, no one trusts it. Knuckleball is the pitch of someone with nothing left to lose. And that's us. We can't try these things and no coach in the right mind would ever risk it, because no one accepts anything from us. So we might as well take advantage of that, right? Even if we don't win a single game, at least we have fun. Fun? What kind of nonsense is this? Chris sh strikes out. The ball recrushiates off the ball recrushiates off Liz's mitt and catches her bare hand, striking a thumb in their painful looking angle. Yikes! Ow! Okay, time out! That looked very painful. Liz's thumb has turned to a swollen purple. Are you okay? Olive! Then is this all you know how to do throw? You can throw fastballs too, but they're not that fast. So a knuckleball is kind of my speciality. I used to watch videotapes and Tim Wakefield pitching on TV over and over again and copied that. It's the only pitch I really appreciate. That's so smart! 
Hoping on, honing on all your skills on an off-speed pitch, knowing that you don't have a muscle to throw fast. Did your coach suggest it? Uh, no, I didn't have one. No one ever taught me anything I taught myself. Huh? Then what made you decide to specialize in knuckler? I chose it because, uh, it's hard to catch. So Dia has to be the one to catch it, since it'll hurt everyone else. What kind of reason is that? She's so stupid, she's unknowingly ending up doing something smart. Min, what do you mean by Diaz having to catch it? Diaz immune to it because she's special. I'm pretty sure that's not how that works. Diaz has been standing by hopefully for five minutes now, looking like she wants to say something. Diaz, would you like to try catching in my place? <laughs> Yay, she's gonna catch! Diaz nods furiously. Then <laughs> that settles it. Let's switch. Okay, guys, I'm gonna end this part right here. Once again, I like that, you know, it's it's teaching about baseball because I don't know anything about sports. I'm like terrible at sports. I don't know anything. Um, but it's nice that they're teaching that to him. And it's also nice that like, I, I guess in a way it's also teaching Noelle to have fun because she never, she's never done that ever since she was a kid. And she's always done work, homework, school, blah, 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 study, all that stuff. She's never had time to just be a kid and have fun. So I feel like this is her first time experiencing, even though she's terrible at baseball, she's experiencing it for the first time, but she's trying to, starting to understand, like, not everything is about school, which I think is very important. Anyway, you guys let me know in the comments what you guys think. And if you guys enjoyed this video, remember to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And remember to hit the bell button on the subscribe button so you can get notifications when I upload videos. Hate saying that. Also, if you want to support the channel on Patreon, the link is in the description. Or you can support the channel for free with gawkbox.com slash a girl in a game. And if you guys use that stuff, it'll help me continue this series and continue the channel overall. Alright guys, I will see you in the next episode. Bye! That's actually true. That's actually- What? Someone died? What the fuck? Someone died? Re-harassment by fellow student, Mr. Phillips. To a uh, Marie. Okay! Alright! Oh, that's a CG. I know I have to still blur it, but that's a CG. Okay. Her, her arm-